नमस्ते अस्सलाम वालेकुम सस्रियकाल एंड वानकम टू ऑल माई इंडियन फ्रेंड्स एंड कॉनिचिवा नी हाओ यो बोशे होला बोंजो एंड हेलो टू ऑल माई फ्रेंड्स अक्रॉस द ग्लोब आई एम हर्षा वो द न्यू टॉपिक ऑफ बायो साइंस अल्टरनेशन ऑफ जनरेशन एंड वेलकम टू माई चैनल हर्ष एजुकेयर बुक्स हैव लिमिटेशन बट वी टीचर्स टू नॉट हैव इट माई टीचर वॉन्स टोल मी दिस टॉपिक reminds me of the statement again and again everything in this topic cannot be understood from a book most students think that once he becomes very familiar with maximum specimen types only after that he will be clear with the topic of aog my opinion is exactly the opposite one need not know about any specimen types while considering this concept first you should be thorough with the concept of aog and afterwards you should proceed to know about the life cycle of any of the specimen types so let's begin books will make you clear about the life cycles of different specimen types but here i will not take much life cycles into consideration i will compare the animal life cycle well with rest of the life cycles and i think you will become clear with the concept now let's start first of all let us take the life cycle of a typical animal and then let us compare that with life cycle of a typical non animal by non animal i mean all the plants fungi and protistans so let's begin this with the similarities between both the life cycles the first similarity is that if we are considering two sexually reproducing organisms on the top and the bottom both then first of all the first similarity is that both of them the life cycle start with a zygote and zygote is always diploid in both the cases it is never 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 haploid zygote always develops into an embryo and zygote always is the result of fertilization between two gametes one male gamete and a female gamete it is always an universal truth the zygote is not formed by any other event so this is the basic similarity next zygote develops into a embryo usually sometimes it is not an embryo sometimes uh, in case of the bottom uh, that is non animal sometimes it is not called an embryo it may be called as thallus but we are taking embryo for convenience here let's say the zygote develops into a multicellular organism it is always unicellular the zygote is unicellular and it is developing into a multicellular organism which we can call as embryo for convenience sake we are taking it embryo it may be thallus also but in the upper case in the life cycle of an animal the thallus word is totally invalid it always develops into an embryo and further the embryo develops into a adult the adult animal bears a sex organ and inside the sex organ meiosis takes place in certain cells only and the certain cells who are the certain cells actually the meiosis takes place in special cells of a tissue called germinal epithelium in the germinal epithelium some cells get selected and undergo meiosis may further grow also and undergo meiosis to produce the gametes so you see the life cycle is very very simple in case of a typical animal but there are certain complexities when we come to the other type in the other type we see when the uh, embryo or thallus whatever that may be when the embryo develops into a sporophyte 
The next level is called a sporophyte. The embryo always develops into a sporophyte, it is said. That or even if the, it is a thallus, we shall merge these two labels and we shall call it as a sporophyte. That's all. Otherwise, there is no much difference. Now, in case of a sporophyte, why is it called a sporophyte? Although in the same line, we are calling, calling it as a adult, why in this case we are calling it as a sporophyte? Because this cell, this organism, this label is destined to produce special structures called as spores. Now let us see what are the spores. First of all, let me tell you, this structure, the sporangium, which I have taken as a circle, and here I have taken the, in the same label, I have taken a sex organ. Why I am calling it as a sporangium, and why not I am calling it as a sex organ? The first question arises. So let me clear you. First, why these are called as sex organs. Sex organs are always destined to produce the gametes. That's why sex organs. But this structure will not produce the gametes. Now another thing, what are gametes? Gametes are those structures that can participate only in one event that is fertilization. They do not undergo mitosis. They always remain haploid. They always remain unicellular. They are never found to undergo mitosis or growth. But in this case, the cell which is going to be produced by this sporangium is not a gamete. It will undergo mitosis. It will undergo growth, everything. That's why the cell cannot be called as gamete. Now, that cell which is produced by the sporangium, is it haploid or is it diploid? Of course, it is haploid. That's why the twist is there. Some cells called as poor mother cells inside the sporangium, they undergo meiosis to produce four spores. Now, the spores are always unicellular and haploid. If the male Get, sporophyte is producing the spore, it shall be called it shall be called as microspore, and the, if the female sporophyte is producing the spore, it shall be called as megaspore. Now the spores they are unicellular, just like the zygote, comparable with the zygote, comparable with the gamete. They are unicellular and they grow up into a spore sorry, gametophyte by mitosis, just mitosis. Now, the, by mitosis, it grows up into a male gametophyte and this male gametophyte, again, I am representing by a rectangle whose size is approximately equal to the embryo. Can you guess why? Because this is comparable to the embryo. The only difference is the ploidy. Now see, you do not find these two in the evoke case, spore or gametophyte. If there is no gametophyte, there is no need of taking the term sporophyte. That's why we have not taken it here. Here, in this case again, the gametophyte undergoes mitosis and also grows a lot, sometimes may not grow a lot also, and bears a sex organ. May not bear a sex organ, that is a diversity, but let's say it bears a sex organ. Now this sex organ should be haploid or diploid. Obviously it is haploid because it is part of a haploid organism. Now if this sex organ is to produce the gamete, 
as it is destined to. Should it undergo meiosis? Never, never, never. It is always mitosis. The sex organ, both by a gametophyte, is haploid and produces gametes by mitosis. Suppose meiosis occurs. What would be the result? The gamete would be containing n by 2 ploidy. This is impossible. It's not compatible with the life cycle. Because n by 2 means the whole life cycle will be disturbed. n by 2 plus n by 2, again it will become n, again it will become n by 2 here, again in the next generation it shall become n by 4. What's it going? So, the sex organ produces the gametes just by mitosis. And the journey again begins from the beginning. That is, the gametes undergo fertilization to produce the zygote, and the same and same again and again, blah, 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 blah. So, this is the life cycle of a typical non-animal that is a plant, a fungi or a protistin. Thanks for now. The rest of the life cycles and uh, every life cycle in detail will be discussed in the further videos. Till then, goodbye.